Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, and guys, I cannot imagine a better subject to tell the story of than Norman Lear. We couldn't either. He's an icon. He's an absolute legend who had never had a film made about him, and he's actually a downright, regular, straightforward, candid guy at the same time, so that was really wonderful for us. So you guys jump into this film. What do you discover about him in 93? That he is in the middle of exploring who he is at 93. Like, he's just halfway through. And that is, it, it was incredible. And it's, it, it's real, it's legitimate, it's genuine. He is open and curious about finding out more about himself and his flaws and other people. And it's just, it's a, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to be reminded of. Does he have any idea about his accomplishments? Like, does he understand that he's probably the most influential man in television history? I, I think he probably in the back of his head knows that he's been told it 5,000 times. I don't think he cares right now. I he think plays a humble card. He, he just is moving forward. He, that's ancient history, man. Right. For, even though it's it's we all are attached to these shows, he likes to say over next. He's in the middle of a 13-part series for Netflix. The man doesn't dwell. He doesn't look bad. I think that's why he's it doesn't look back, rather. I think that's part of his secret to longevity. He's um, melancholy only once upon a time when you have to really bring it out of him. He's really a kind of a silver bullet moving forward and so he knows it somewhere but doesn't talk about it when you look at his genius what makes him such a genius he you know what he notices talent in people and he um, he's got like a sixth sense about what people can do and, and bring to bring to the fore and he he inspires people. So there's people that he's met that had, didn't have any career at all, and he just saw something in them, and they delivered. And you know that is that is as a, as a writer, a television writer, it was his it was his gift from God. We call it a secret weapon, casting. He would pluck someone from the theater, including um, B. Arthur and Sherman Helmsley, who was George Jefferson, uh, Carol O'Connor. These are theater actors, and he was like. We're going to do it on television, and nobody was doing that. And so he was able, he's able to penetrate and say, I can imagine this guy as Archie or, or as Maude or whatever. And he was very rarely wrong with his casting choices, and that is a real special gift.